First lesson, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Beloved, we have come into this kingdom to show a thankful heart, to glorify and praise God. We have not come to preach or express our wisdom. We have to believe and have faith in Him and do anything you know that can magnify the glory of the living God. We have to express love, peace, mercy and humility. These are the qualities of God's children. As you express your gratitude to God, you are promoting His glory among men. It is for this reason that John the Baptist testified that God must increase while He decreases. St. John chapter 3 verses 27 to 30. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it, it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Like John the Baptist, we should rejoice in his arrival, for as many as receive him and are glad in his visitation are blessed. They shall all have their joy fulfilled. You must be told that you are not rejoicing in order to enter into the kingdom of God. He has brought the kingdom and had already called you in gratis. You are only asked to show appreciation for what he has done. Whatever therefore is done here is out of a thankful heart, and this is why we do not impose levies and on members for any reason. You are not called into this kingdom because of your wealth, beauty, or wisdom. You may be deformed, ugly, short or tall, yet you find yourself here. Once you were destined to enter into this kingdom, you will be called in, no matter your status or stature. Nobody can ever seize what is yours as long as it was destined for you. Do not allow any person's words, vision or prophecy to cause you to backslide or become weak. Be not intimidated by any vision or visioner. Some of the visioners are capable of causing a great deal of trouble for a person of little faith. Some visions portray that one is in the prison, whereas this is the kingdom where freedom and liberty abound. So you can see that such spirits are not from the Father. Have I ever made negative pronouncements? How then can one give you a vision of how fire burns your entire family. How can that happen when the Father is alive? Our God is omnipresent, omnipotent and omniscient. Therefore, nothing can take him by surprise. Since no wisdom or power is above him, why then should someone threaten you with vision of prophecy? Simply reply to such visioner that we have a kingdom 
which nothing can shake in heaven or on earth. So our job is to rejoice and show a thankful heart to God. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, Romans chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. Verses 3 to 4. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of death. This kingdom is given to us free, just for the fact that we believe in him. It could be traced to the story of the prodigal son. After wasting the entire wealth handed over to him by his father, he repented. Realizing his folly, he asked himself why he should subject himself to such torture when his father's servants were well taken care of. He decided, he decided to go back to his father and plead for forgiveness. As he went back, his father saw him from afar and ran to him. He embraced his son, took him home, and ordered that he should be clothed in fine clothes. And, big, and a big feast was celebrated for his return. St. Luke 15 verse 11 to 24 says, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto him his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there was waste, and there wasted his substance with righteous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk of the swine, with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him anything. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet of a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am not more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it in, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring thither the fatted calf and kill it, and let his let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again; he was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. End of quote. Here, yeah. this is exactly what will happen. To all the children of God in this era. Once you turn to God, He is ready to welcome you and endow you with power, position, and possession. A time is coming, and indeed very soon, when all will see what God had planned for His people. The type of joy awaiting the children of God is indescribable. This is the kingdom of God where no one is cheated or discriminated against. 
Do not mind those who claim to be expecting God from the sky, but you should, you should believe that God is in your midst and therefore rejoice and be happy by singing praises to God always. The so-called church dignitaries and rich people of the world claim to be worshipping the real God who they expect from the clouds. They build houses and cathedrals with gold and other costly materials, yet they do not believe in God. They accuse members of brotherhood of the cross and star of worshipping a human being instead of God. Since you are not ashamed of worshipping a man and have implicit faith in God, you are blessed. You will certainly reap the fruits of your labor because the Almighty God who are who you are worshipping who is dwelling in you and in whom you believe will provide all your needs and even more this kingdom has been given to you gratis but those who claim to be wise in the world will regret while they are watching the sky the sun rays will get them blinded and by the time they will look down. They will not see anything. Abraham did not become a friend of God by watching the sky or by wealth. He became God's friend and father of nation because he had faith in God. So all children of God have faith in God and are covered by the grace of the Almighty. No one enters into this kingdom except he is a child of God. It is extremely difficult and in fact impossible for one who is not a destined child of God to believe in God. This is why the worldly people say that brotherhood members are worshipping a human being. Only the children of this kingdom know and believe in their father. We were not called because of our good works and because we were destined to be here, coupled with the fact that we have faith in God the Father. Right now, all those who were unemployed and gainfully employed, those who were owed, are rewarded for everything they do here. Kneeling down, singing, dancing, and even kowtowing is fully rewarded. Salvation was already written for you and has since come to fulfillment. If anybody should request for money in order that you may gain salvation or entry into the kingdom, do not give. All those who were destined to come in here gain the entry gratis. All that is required of you is to believe in God. Non-baptized members of this fold do not complain. Non-baptized members of this fold do complain that we are not worthy. But it has pleased our Father to call us into his kingdom. Unfortunately, those of them who presume that they are worthy are not called and so cannot come. The children of this kingdom are properly schooled. So, whether you are preaching, singing, prophesying, or giving vision, know that you know what you say, for no child of God can be deceived. You have to take precaution on how you deal with them, for it was written of them to know themselves. When one gives a vision that the Father has come with angels to watch over people, this is this is this one directed by the Spirit? Who are those to be watched in the kingdom of God? God promised to forgive and forget all the sins of his children that he will teach all of them from the least to the greatest. Read Hebrews chapter 8 verses 10 to 12. For this is the covenant 
that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their righteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. This promise is now fulfilled in the children of God. Angels themselves fear, adore, and worship Him. This is not the era of war, which would warrant some visioners to reveal such in their vision. Christ has fought his war and conquered all, which explains why he dropped his former name Jesus, indicating that he has completed that assignment on the cross. Now that he is called the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, this is the era of joy, hence all knees must kneel and heads bow unto him, for all beings, for all human beings must worship him. Hebrews chapter 1 Verse 6 states, And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, Let all the angels of God worship him. In this case, who can challenge you or become a stumbling block to you? This is the kingdom of joy, freedom and liberty. It is only in the world that people are in bondage. Dear you have visions of doom and slavery. Here we are saved by grace in accordance with God's promise. See region chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Wherever you go, all angels worship you. There is no stumbling block on your way. The, tri the triune God is in full operation in the universe, spiritually, physically, and otherwise. There is no external force that can disturb you. The children of God say that this is the long-expected time. The angels proclaim that the end of time has come. But Satan says there is still much time. Let him fix his time if he can. This is our time to rejoice with our God in his kingdom. Whatever is your stature or status, nativity or gender is the material. As long as you are his, your time to rejoice has come. Bring forth anything that you have as a symbol of joy. But if you do not have anything, let your conscience be pure and clear with everybody. No matter your state of life and no matter your numerous sins, once you believe in him, this is your era of joy. You have no problem, for this is the new heaven and new earth wherein dwells righteousness. Read Second Peter chapter 3 verse 13. Nevertheless, we are, we nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Why should visioners still continue to tell you that witchcraft, ghost, apparition, incubus, and the like things are against you? Where do these things exist? And who is it that does not fear and worship God? There is no negativity in this kingdom. Do not listen to those visioners who give you visions of doom. A visioner who reveals a case of an accident for you 
is telling an imaginary story. This is because no one can successfully plan an accident for you when your father is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. Also, when you are told that hired killers are waiting in a bush or at the corner of a certain street to murder you, do not believe for such stories are false. These are lies that can successfully frighten and frighten the worldly people who do not possess the Holy Spirit. A visioner who gives such visions to Brother of the Cross and Star members is only exhibiting his ignorance. Knife, sword, gun, or any weapon made by man cannot harm any member of this fold. Even Satan and his agent in the world know that no destructive weapon can arm any true brotherhood member. The glory derived from this kingdom is everlasting and this kingdom is an eternal kingdom. All those who believe in God and rejoice with him shall remain under this great canopy forever. Your state of birth or your status in life cannot influence God's choice over you as his child. Therefore, all you have to do is to repent and rejoice in his advent. This kingdom has in stock everything one can think of. The spiritual, physical, and material benefits of this world and even beyond are assembled here. In fact, they are in surplus just as just as Bian, Anien, Evai, Natural Choir sang in their song that there are enough rooms and there are enough rooms in the kingdom of God. Every person has his own glory and position. So do not bother about another person's position. Rather, hold fast and keep your position well. There are those at the forefront, those behind and those on the left and right. But he knows everyone and calls each person by name till the end of time. However, if he had not called you, it would be impossible for you to enter in or inherit his kingdom. No one comes in here by wisdom, wealth, power, or any type of mundane manipulation. You cannot come in on your own volition, but must be called. You only come in by faith in him, which of course is the resultant effect of your destiny. For only the children of God believe in God, their Father, all those who have strived to forsake sins and those who have tried to do good but the ability was not given are having their desires fulfilled having developed faith in him once you believe in him he takes over your burden and meets your age-long desires he takes care of you and, fin and finally changes you for good all these he does gratis this is the kingdom of love, unity, goodness, and joy, wherein righteousness dwells. Therefore, do not allow any person to deceive you or frighten you with vision or prophecy. The Father exists in multiple forms. He is overwhelmingly present in all creatures. It follows that nothing evil can harm you. Therefore, know that you are completely free and liberated. What you cannot do due to the weariness of your flesh, your faith in him has accomplished it for you. This is the unshakable kingdom which cannot be terminated by any force, visible or invisible. Do not, therefore, 
believe any false vision. Recall when our Lord Jesus Christ was ministering on earth, a city of the Samaritan once refused him and his disciples passage to Jerusalem. James and John, in annoyance, asked Christ that they should be allowed to command fire from heaven to consume the entire city. But Christ rebuked them and disclosed to them that he came to save lives. Read Luke chapter 9 verses 51 to 56. It says, And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritan to make ready for him and they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem and when his disciples James and John saw this they said Lord will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did but he turned and rebuked them and said ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of for the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives but to save them and they went to another village our lord jesus christ knew that his disciples were in the flesh and so reminded them that his era cannot be compared with that of Elijah. I want you to understand that the administration in Brother of the Cross and Star is quite different from what man may cogitate. This is because some people do not understand the sensitive nature of this kingdom. Hence, they make all sorts of vain and negative pronouncements. Such are elementary reckoning. God has come to rebuild and demolish places and to reconstruct what was destroyed. He has not come to destroy but to change man to God. The vain statements you make out of ignorance are what causes people to speak ill about God and brother of the cross and star. Why people infest you with mundane doctrines and elementary vision is because of your relationship with other members. If you behave uprightly and truthfully with others, God would be glorified. God is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, and so does not need any help from any quarter to build his kingdom. I want everybody to take note of this warning. If you are a visioner, do not stand up to say whatever you like. God is not a God of confusion. Do not therefore confuse or sudden his children with visions of doom.